Welcome to the Kame House Party. I'm Vince. And I'm John. God dang it. Okay, something's going on here. Because you're not Aaron. And I miss Aaron. And I... It's all right. Who are you? My name is uh, John Franklin Shepard II. Now take off that mask. Now I know who you are. John, my boy. Yeah. John, welcome back to the podcast. Th- thanks for having me back. I thought uh, that the Aaron mask I was wearing would make you feel more comfortable having me here. It would have had you said my name is Aaron, but instead you said my name is John. Ah. Uh, you know, I never think these things all the way through. It's the details. Yeah, I know. Something. I just was happy that I'd done such a good job on making his face. It's like Mission Impossible. So- Quality, I feel like. Yeah, no, that's really high quality latex. You got, Thank you. You got going there. You mind if I touch it? Oh uh, yeah, please do. I like people to admire my work. Squeaky, 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 squeaky. Oh, that's real yeah. good material there, boy. Honestly, I find if I if I if I put lotion on, it doesn't squeak as much. But I I like that. I like that. That's kind of like my signature is the squeakiness in the mask. Yeah, yeah. You know what, John? I am so happy to have you back on the oh. podcast. If you are new to the podcast, John is a Are you our first returning guest to the podcast? Yes, you might be. Uh, John Shepard was on one of the earlier episodes with, uh, I'll call him your ward. I'll I'll call him. Yeah, he is kind of like a a burden to me. Yeah, I think that's what a ward means. So, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, With Ian Heron, uh, John is a, a, a good friend of mine and a friend of the podcast. He is a improviser, actor. And uh, he is on a team of mine called the Legend of Bagger Vance. Mm-hmm. It's actually John's team. Mm-hmm. And I'm just a part of it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, I feel we're, it's all just, it's just a summation of all of its parts. So, you know, like, without you, there's no legs to stand on. You, you shut up with your flattery. Okay, okay. Shut your goddamn mouth about the flattery. Because, John, you're here today not to talk about improv. No, no. But to talk about dragon. Happy to do both. Happy to do both. Don't see why I can't. I can't force one into the other. Oh, John, I guess you uh, may have forgotten the format of the podcast because that's all it is, baby. Oh, we force improv into anime and anime into improv. I'm looking over the script that we wrote earlier, and I don't see this part in there. Shut up! Oh, oh, oh! (laughs) That's right. John forgot not to talk about the script. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) Throwing this script away. Disintegrated. <laughs> Just another one of the features of this mask. Still got the mask on the table, folks. Now, with that intro concluded, ladies and gentlemen, it, we got to get some Kame housekeeping done. No. If you are new to the podcast, what that means is we're going to do some setup stuff so that uh, makes it a little bit easier for you to e- get into get into the show. Uh, it's your drive time radio. Yeah, it's voice. my drive time. <laughs> Welcome to Comedy House Party. Oh boy, it's gonna be a crazy. Goku's getting in all kinds of trouble today. Uh, we're gonna get into that, but first, the weather and fun. <laughs> uh, so the first piece of Kame housekeeping has got to be that one minute roundup. Oh, and bef- before I'm excited for this. Before we get into it, can I just say that uh, you know, uh, Aaron. Uh, you're, you're sorely missed, um, R.I.P. And uh, uh, I just I really look forward to doing the rest of of this uh, of this series with you, Vince. So um, wow, uh, I'm just called you a friend of the podcast, and you interrupted the one minute roundup. <sighs> John, you're working on becoming an enemy of the podcast. I just am, and then if people decide that they're against me, that's their own business. Chaotic neutral is his name. Mm. I didn't interrupt the the podcast the one minute by the way because we hadn't gotten into it. Yet. <laughs> Just want you know I would never I would never. Well, we're about to get into the intro to the one minute roundup. So here we go, the one minute roundup. Watch. It is hot today. Woo, 
hot out here. Oh, hot. So hot. Would you agree? Oh, boy. It is very hot out here. Yes. Mm. And you're sure you're paying for gold in the right outfit there, sir? You got a lot of clothes on. Well, um, <laughs> that's the thing, you know, um, I kind of feel like I need to sell, sell off some of these clothes. <laughs> so, interested? Well, <laughs> maybe if this gold pennant works out, maybe I will be interested in buying some of your very, very nice clothes, mister. But until then, I just gotta focus on dipping this here metal half bucket into the water, oh. shaking it around and seeing if there's any flecks of that, that sweet, sweet gold. Okay, and don't mind if I just roll up my gold pants and stick my little ankies in. Oh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm just gonna excuse, I'm excuse me, sir. Hmm? Did you just say you're you're wearing gold pants? Oh, it was, it was, that wasn't obvious. You're staring at me. I mean, well, I, I always stare at the eyes because I am a gentleman. I noticed. You're very present. Thank I like you. that. Anyway, I'm going to roll up Roll up my gold pants and stick my ankies in this river. I hope. Oh, you fun. said it again. Oh yeah, my gold pants. You know there's a rush going on, a rush for gold. Oh. Now, if you're not careful, one of these other miners might get the idea to just take them from you. Uh, well, I I did that. They are very, very, very form fitting. I don't see how any of these other gentlemen could fit into these. I don't I don't think that would be a good idea for for them. Now, I could take those. Gold pants off your hands, you see. But I don't really have the cash to cover it. So what I would offer you is my mining plot right here on the riverbank. You give me this whole plot of the I river? I give you this whole side of the river. I, don't I know found that. two ounces of gold and then I lost it. <laughs> two ounces? That's... Almost an inch of my gold pants that I'm wearing. But wearing imagine the high rate of return should you find that sweet, sweet nugget, my dear boy. Right, I could have a whole wardrobe, wardrobe of gold. Yes, you could have a whole wardrobe of gold. <laughs> Man, you make a very convincing argument. Plus, it's so hot, and I'm wearing so much pants. I just have half a mind to take them off anyway and reveal to the world my gold underwear that I'm wearing beneath them. Oh, gold! Amazing! I mean, just take on this plot, and it's all yours. All the gold could be yours. You know what? What the heck, Chauncey? What do you have to lose? <laughs> you wandered out into this desert looking for a new beginning. There it is. Here's one. Here it is. God's presenting it for you. <laughs> take it. Take it, Chauncey. Take it. Okay, we've made a decision. You and Chauncey, your horse? <laughs> and that's the end of the one-minute roundup. <laughs> Uh, for those of you new to the show, whenever one of us breaks during that <laughs> improvised western scene, <laughs> though, thus ends the one minute roundup. Mm -hmm. Then we get into the hard part. Uh, it's a bit of a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. That is, I have one minute to summarize everything that has happened in Dragon Ball up until this point. Up until episode 80, which we will talk about right after this. But first, I got a minute. Oh, man, I got a minute to summarize everything. <clears throat> Here we go. In three, two, one. There are seven magic dragon balls. When gathered together, you can make a wish. Bulma, blue-haired girl, meets Goku. He's got a monkey tail. They fight Pilaf, the Red Ribbon Army. They save the world a couple of times. Goku fights in a Tenkaichi tournament. He becomes second best in the world to his master, Master Roshi. Roshi says, oh, you got to go and explore life. There's no thing else I can train for you right now. So Goku goes out, and he's like, I want to find my four-star dragon ball. That was a memento from my grandpa. He goes out and finds it. Fights off the Red Ribbon Army again. Blah, blah, blah. Now, now Goku, he uh, he brought his friend Upa's father back to life after climbing a big old tower, meeting a cat who taught him how to fight better. Uh, and uh, oh gosh, and uh, he 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 did it. He beat Baba. He beat his grand. He didn't beat his grandpa, but he lost his tail. He he's got he got the wish. He beat Pilaf a third time. Now Goku is on his life journey to get stronger and he he's running into some guy 
is. Oh boy. And we're back. Oh boy. And we're and we're back. Back onto the pod. So that was the one minute roundup. If you didn't quite catch all of that, or um, if my explanation was too good, then you can go back and listen to our old episodes. We love it when you guys do that. Uh, go out, go back, check out our old epies. Um, we got some great special guests this month: Will Martinez, Dan Owen, and uh, it'll go well with this upcoming episode with our good friend John Shepard for uh, episode eighty. Episode eighty. Yeah. Uh, last piece of comedy housekeeping we got to do is John has been gracious enough to take on the Aaron role and watching the subbed version. Mm. I watch the English dubbed version. We do that for uh, comedic effect. By that, (laughs) I mean. Uh, Sometimes in the translation, context is changed. Things are lost. Things are skipped. There's a lot more music in the Japanese version that doesn't get translated into the English version. So we might get into a little bit of that. It's for your benefit. So you don't have to go back and watch every episode in both languages who needs that you've already done one why go back and do the other we did it for you exactly so john it's been a little while since you've been here but we like to start the episode by talking about the the title so i think i'll let you go first Mm. because you have the japanese title um and obviously beauty before age uh I know you can't see him, but he is a handsome boy. He's a handsome boy named John. I can only do podcasts because I've been told I'm too distractingly beautiful to watch. Exactly. um, The Japanese title was Imperial Match, Goku versus Ten Long. Ten Long. I wonder if that translates into this one, into my title uh, of episode 80, Goku versus Sky Dragon. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you can talk about this right now. It seems like we got a pretty literal translation. I'm pretty sure we understand that long means dragon. And what was it? Uh, 10 must mean sky. 10 must mean sky because I look, if, if I get this wrong, please write in. We'll read the correction on air next time. Shenlong which is the name of the eternal dragon, mm. I'm sure. Shen means eternal, right? Mm, that make, this, this is all adding up. For this me. is all it's adding up, right? Moment, yeah. Boom, we've done it. We've cracked the code. Uh, but let's, let's jump right into this episode uh, to the cold, cold rainy open, I call mm. it. Uh, we get a beautiful kind of skybox. It's dark. Then we get some rain. Yeah. Uh, there's a bit of narration from the... Uh, From the narrator about how Goku is on his life journey. He's learning from this mystical teacher called Life, Hmm. uh, carrying a big old stone on his back. Big stone. And then he's walking around on his hands. Oh, yeah. And he loses control on those hands, Vince. You know, we go, by the time he's on his hands, it is no longer stormy and rainy. We have this, uh, it seems like a very foreboding storm. I mean, it's also a storm you wouldn't mind just sitting out on a porch in your rocking chair during. You know, if you got the proper cover, it seems like it could be enjoyable. Absolutely. But uh, then he just, if for some reason, walking on his hands. It looks like, in his eyes, it looks like he thinks that his... Um, that he's doing training, that this is making him stronger. But I'm not sure. The rock thing feels very much like, okay, yeah, maybe. But like at this point, is walking on your hands doing anything for you? I, I mean, John, I don't, I don't want to be an asshole here. Okay. Well, but have don't. you ever walked on your hands up and or down a mountain? Well, it's okay. To be fair, he was doing it only down. If he was doing it up, I'd be impressed, Vince. I really would. But yes, to be honest, every time that I go, I descend into a subway... Or down the stairs. I do it on my hands because it's just it's easier. I mean I think I think about it it's like you know, if you ever meditate, they ask you to breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Um, it's kinda like for me, I'll walk up with my legs and down with my arms. So Wow. Um, I just wasn't impressed. I didn't I didn't know that about you, John. No. I see you often. We're always on elevators together though. I guess that's it. I guess that's it. But you heard it here. Goku's a bitch because he's walking on his hands, according to John Shepard. You can quote me on that. But you can quote him on that. So Goku, he is he's walking on his hands. He loses control, like you said. He falls off a cliff, and he's saved by the tail, not right. by the bell, 
like the show, but he's saved by his tail. So his tail is back. John, I don't know if you remember or if you caught, and I did. I don't know if it came up in the one minute roundup. But Goku lost his tail a couple episodes ago, uh, and now it's grown back. And you, you know, I, I just want to say um, we didn't get a ch- I didn't get a chance to to say this before, but every piece of information was in that one minute roundup. If you if if just for the listeners, if you didn't hear. Uh, just go back and listen at it. Uh, listen at, at like one tenth of the speed, and you can get literally every arc of every episode. I don't know how Vince did it, but he just got out every piece of de- of information. So it was in there. I I with my stupid mortal hearing ears uh, didn't hear you say that that part uh, in particular. But I do when he got when he got caught. He did say, "Oh, finally, I've gotten you strong enough." And I'm like, "Oh, okay. There's something to this." Exactly. Uh, Goku then helps an old lady by picking up her shirt out of the river that she was washing. I, and I, for me, the Dragon Ball, the dra- specifically the Dragon Ball world, it seems like there is a lot of technological disparity in the world. I know Goku's kind of in a remote place, right? Yes. I but, was... there, but there are capsules, like there are capsule yes. shops yes. everywhere. We've yes. seen even more remote cities right. or towns <laughs> right. that have capsule well, technology. When we're up in Sano's village, like it's like okay, we're remote and we want a more simple life, but we still have the trapping. Like the technology has reached us, and we've picked what we wanted. Yeah, and like. Even with, like, Nam's village, I'm like, okay, well, this is based on, like, where they are and how few they are. But they still, like, seem like they have a little bit of knowledge of what's going on. This whole episode, this whole town feels like, I mean, Dragon Ball is essentially all of time happening at once. Right. But I felt like this village just is like, nah, we're not going to participate. We are going to stick with the year, like, 1800, and that's where we're going to live. Pretty much. Down to the aesthetics of the village, it's very... Uh, what, what would you like Shogun era like it it seems very it's almost like the first season of Naruto boom I got Naruto uh, into this episode uh, suck it nerds uh, but no there we go it's it, it was weird to me that like there there's no hint of capsule technology in this episode whatsoever I was thinking that the whole and you know with, with this show I'm often like thinking something weird and then all the, the question is in a roundabout way answered, but this one never really was. At the beginning, you don't see any of the animal people, and that was a that was a, a an issue for me. But by the by by the end, we we do get a few. You see a couple in the we crowd. Get, they're not yeah, they're not they're prominent not. by any means, but at least like they're like, okay, this is you know this is a village <laughs> of the world still, but they have not been reached at all by Capsule Corp or any of the that's right prevailing technology. Bulma's insidious tentacles of Enterprise have not reached this pure village. And I, think, I appreciate that to a certain degree. Because they're, they're untainted. They're untainted well, yeah. by Balma's hateful capitalist just forcing capsules down people people's throat. But I do wonder why they don't have them. Yeah, I, but yeah, what's the decision? We never say, oh, well, it's because Balma's a terrible person or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But also it's doc, it's Dr. Brief. So I've, I learned their last name is – recently I learned their last name is Brief. And I believe her first name also means underwear, yes? Bloomers. Bl- Bloomers. Bloomers. Bloomers Brief is Bloomers her name. Bloomers Briefs, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, see, now we know why she's such a bad person. Well, I mean, her sister seems fine. Bulma has a sister named Tights. Oh, my God. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Some of our great, great fans pointed that out on Twitter <laughs> that I was an idiot and I didn't know that. <laughs> Wait, but so she hasn't come into play into this show yet, right? Not, not yet. Tights, I think, has a cameo in Super, oh. but that's about it. Like, she I think Bulma just, like, calls her. the family or like, there's Bulma and then later on, especially in like Dragon Ball Z, um, her parents are like they the family is involved, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for tights to not be in it, I don't know. I Since mean, we can we can get into the briefs family because they don't seem to age very far. Like her father is alive and kicking through all the sagas of Z. Yeah. And in Super, which as I'm aware, Super is kind of in between two sagas. I don't know if that's canon, not in a canon. Somebody will correct me on that. I would love if somebody corrected me on that. I'm holding off on watching Super until like four years from now when we get to it <laughs> with the podcast. But 
God damn that Yui. Do you think you'll go through? So I just also found out that they did rigid Dragon Ball Z with um, Dragon Ball Z Kai. Yeah. So do you think you'll do that or Dragon Ball Z? Because I hear hell no, no, no Kai. No, we gotta do we gotta do an OG okay, style. Okay, I, I get that. But I so I haven't seen any of it. I don't know that much about it. But I hear the the big tenements of that rehashing is that it tightens it up. So mm-hmm. when Namek is gonna blow in five minutes, potentially it maybe does. And also, like, spoilers, sorry. Um, and the animation might be a little bit different. Little yeah, bit. They, they, from what I've seen, I've seen some episodes of Kai. They updated the animation to match, like, the stuff that's in Super a little bit more. Okay. Um, and like you said, yeah, they, they cut down some of the fat. They trimmed some of the uh, filler episodes. The filler episodes that we know and love. Yeah. Like Goku Hon- Learns to Drive. Right. <laughs> and some of the great Saiyan Man stuff I hope they cut out. Honestly, I think that really Dragon Ball thrives. Dra- the whole universe, Dragon Ball universe, thrives in those filler episodes when they're just like, well, what are we going to do? And then they get to be goofy and crazy again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Those are great. It's I think... I think it's the episodes within the saga where they're like, we should stretch this out a little bit longer. Those are the ones I can see them cutting it down a little bit and not being like crazy about, uh, mad about it. Right. And speaking about getting mad about it, when Goku, so Goku is kind of, he's basically on, on the hunt for strong fighters to test his skill. He asked the old lady at the river, Hey, are there any strong fighters around? And she quickly says, master chin. Yeah. Um, He's in the city, uh, down the river. Goku gets to town. There's ar- already shit's popping off. So it's Master Chin, uh, his son, Shoken, uh, Rising Dragon, uh, and Rising Dragon's two lackeys. Mm. Squaring off in the center of town. It's about to be, it's about to be a girl fight. Uh, and we kind of, we kind of get to see like this Master Chin guy. You're like, who is this dude? What's his deal? Well, a couple things. Like, okay, in in your version, is it Rising Dragon? Is that his? Is it say, oh, hey, Rising, I'm Rising Dragon? Or because, yeah, it does, it's just. I mean, obviously, like just Shao, long mm-hmm. in mind. But um, okay, all right. Yeah. Um, I also think this is interesting because, but first, I'm like, well, you did a dude. You did a tournament, a world strongest person tournament. But I get also, like, you think about the uh, codes of these fighters being like, well, I can see why a lot of them wouldn't just enter a tournament just out of uh, principle alone. So this is kind of, I mean, it's like a kind of cool journey to go I, on. I was asking, like, where were these guys yeah. in the Tenkaichi right. tournament? Like, I, are they going to show up? And probably not. But, like, it would have been kind of cool to even see them in, just like in the opening stages but I guess they would then have to write them in as like fighters that get pretty far. But yeah, like I would have liked maybe in the next Tenkaichi tournament, we see some of these characters show up. That would be a nice little reunion. Yeah. I always am very pleased with any like character callbacks in the show. I mean, when we did, uh, oh man, what's his name? The, the dragonfly guy. And we went to his town in, in right after the, um, the tournament, I was very pleased. Um, Monster Beast Kieran. Oh, yeah. Mon- Monster Beast Kieran. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his. He likes to be called that. I'm not using the M word insensitively. He wanted to be called that. He called into the podcast. He told me. Yeah. Okay. That's how he liked to be called. That is his moniker. He's reclaiming the M word. Okay. Right. I know some people got on me for using it a little bit flippantly in describing Bulma. But look, I am a giant human being that some people would consider an M word. I would never call you an M word. I know you wouldn't. An M word, ladies and gentlemen. The letter M. Uh, <laughs> just making that very clear. What else? What, what else would they be confused? You know what, John? That's a perfect time to transition into what happens in this in this opening scene when we first meet okay. Master Shin, Master Chin, okay. and his son Shoken, which is almost. I, I don't know if you picked up on that. He is the exact same character kind of model as Gohan. Yeah. Like, of young Gohan from the Z series, like, same haircut, yeah. same build. The only thing he was missing is a tail and a sword. Yeah. But, like, I was like, this is weird. It was it was very weird. It looked exactly like him. He sounded a little different. Didn't have, like, the same spirit, because I'd say some of his actions later, uh, Gohan never would have done. But... Uh, it was. I was a moment. I'm like, why do I recognize this 
cartoon character. Yeah. From um, later in the show, it turns out. But uh, this might be jumping forward a few seconds, but I I, I just want to say I wrote down the uh, the phrase Prince Slappy Hands in his fine pink duds shows up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that you called him Prince Slappy Hands. Uh, he is. He, he's got a pretty fly outfit. So what we can do right now, we can skip to that part. We can play this this very fun game called There It Is Now. A very fun game where we describe to you a new character in the Dragon Ball universe. Mm. Um, and this will be for the character uh, known as Prince Slappy Hands, a.k.a. Sky Dragon, aka Ten Long, aka Ten Long. Uh, John and I are going to take turns describing one aspect right. of this character. Great. So, John, oh, I'd be honored. Okay, so let's let us begin with the um, yearbook enthusiast haircut that he has of, of just somebody in a, like a thirteen year old who just has continued to do what. A hairstyle his mom prescribed him, oh, I don't know, like five, seven years ago. Bull. Bull is a way to describe it. Bull cut. A mighty a mighty purple bull cut. Yeah, with a, sh- a very shiny glisten. Mm-hmm. He moisturizes. Mm. Uh, he has a blue, like I would say like a a sky blue neckerchief. Turquoise. Wrapped around his shoulders, tied in a fancy bow in the front. Right, and it matches... Um, I think since we're on that, I have to mention that it matches the high-waisted sky blue turquoise, like, pants. But, like, the pants in the, in this guy's wearing are, like, like if a sack <laughs> – like, there's no lining to the pants. It's just, like, a sack that is then tightened around the waist with a, a, a rope. He's got a pink tunic beneath uh, all of this that is so loud. Oh, yeah. He is showing out. This oh. Sky Dragon. Right. I guess he's earned the title. It's 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 maybe arguably the most normal in this world article of clothing that he's wearing, but he changes it with the color. He he makes it pop out still. And then he's wearing uh, a suit of armor. Just just like an armor breastplate mm-hmm. over top of the tunic. But underneath the kerchief and pants, um, that it has still the same loud pink lining of that matches the tunic that he's wearing with gold nipple coins on it. He's got gold nipple coins and I'll just describe his face and then oh. we'll be done with the game. He's got almost a Jet Lee kind of Bruce Lee vibe to his to his eyes and bone structure. Right. He's also got very large ears. Oh. So all together, I hope you've gotten because I, I'm sure you've watched this, but in case you haven't, it's fun for us to just describe this nonsensical right. character uh, in the look, sky drag. The look that he, the expression that he is donning when he first shows up is like, do I take care of the, the, the poop that I just had in my pants now or after this interaction <laughs> I'm about to uh, take part in? He did look like somebody interrupted him right before he went to the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, and he shows up right after we meet Master Chin, who is defending his son's honor after being called a thief by Sky Dragon's brother, uh, Rising Dragon in my episode. In your episode, what was his name? Uh, Xiao Long. Now, John, let me try to translate. Okay. What do you think? What are you thinking here? I'm I'm pretty sure the long okay. is dragon. Oh, correct. Okay. And then the the what was it? What was it? Well, could you give me the first uh, part again, um, my dear boy? His first name was Shao. Shao. Yeah. Shao must mean rising. Wait, you don't have to clap. I'll let the podcast listeners applaud. I'll wait. This is a long standing O. Yeah, you don't want to talk. I don't when they're making all this noise. Shh. Okay, and we're back. So, Master Chin is squaring off against Rising Dragon and his two flunkies. And uh, Gotta love a good flunky. Gotta love these two good flunkies. One of them, a monk similar to Krillin. He's got the six dots. Oh. So, he may be a friend of Krillin who just got his ass beat. 
Maybe it never seemed seemed like anybody in the dojo Krillin came from was like a friend to Krillin. He's he's like the kid in Moonrise Kingdom that came from that group home, you know, like yeah, he yeah, is yeah. the one who did not fit in there. Mm-hmm. But it turns out it's because he was the strongest. <laughs> John, you make an excellent point. Right. Also a little bit sad when you're thinking about poor, poor Krillin. Yeah. <sighs> Krillin. But he he may well, you know, look, he he finds love eventually. With arguably one of the most attractive women in the in the uh, universe, so uh, kudos to that guy. Kudos to Krillin. Everybody, take your lighters out. <laughs> Put them up. Flick them on for Krillin. You notice that your lighter is a little low on fluid. Okay, fine. Take a match out. We need to get that fire. That flame needs to be burning, baby. Burn that flame for the Krillin. Yeah. Shine it off his bald head. He likes that. So we get to see. Chow, I mean, Chin in action. He, he's he got some considerable skill. He dispatches the two lackeys with relative ease. Mm-hmm. And then he's about to step up to Rising Dragon. And, uh, oh, what happens? Our boy Chin, he's got a bit of a cough. Uh-huh. He's hurting right. in, internally. Uh, before Rising Dragon can strike him down, in a bit of cowardice, if you ask me, Goku steps in, showing off his after-image technique. Was there any interesting dialogue in your version around that stuff? Because the whole fight started because Rising Dragon lost his wallet. Dropped his wallet. Goku found it on the ground because it just fell on the ground. Right. Now, Shin's son, Sho Ken, who we described as looking a lot like a young Gohan. Mm-hmm. I don't like him. I don't like Sho Ken. I, and I wrote in my notes... His kid, kind of a brat. Yeah. Do you agree? Oh, I absolutely agree. Like I said, uh, um, if you want to just, if you want to quote me on this, just rewind this podcast a little bit. I do not. Uh, he doesn't have the Gohan spirit. And, yeah. You know, uh, not not all the kids in the show are pretty. Like, you know, Krillin learned and he became better. You know, Gohan is born of on the earth and he, you know, he learns his way. Goku obviously has his own journey. But this kid, this kid I'm not a big fan of. Um, he, the whole time is just like, I don't know, cowering and uh, critical of everybody else. But he's kind of, arrogant. Like, he's arrogant yeah. about being an asshole. Yeah. He's like, oh, my dad will kill, kick your ass. Of course. I, I'll kick your butt. I'll fight you. Whatever. It's like, no way, bro. Which is maybe problematic to have him as the martial arts teacher for the Empire. The name of it's the Imperial match that we're all we're all driving to. I don't know. That was in my title, but I think it was still mentioned in the in the, the dubbed. Uh, in my version, it's just called the King's match. Uh, so see, he's a king. See, that makes sense. I feel like you can have a king of a village, but an empire, an emperor, feels like that is that is a a, a network of of locations. And I'm like, mm-hmm. but wait, but what? <laughs> Like, so are you calling this emperor a false emperor? Are you calling what is Do we name? get his name in yours? I, I get I get the name. name in mine. Oh, you're gonna like this. And, well, in your episode, it would be Emperor Wonton. In mine, it's King Wonton. <laughs> King Wonton! You know what? I think the juxtaposition of making the title before Wonton more significant makes the, the name even sillier. Mm-hmm. Emperor Wonton. That's great. Let's get. Let's do a scene on how he got his name. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait. So I'm king. So my dad died, and now I'm king. Yes, you're king now. But mm. as Pope of Food, I can give you an even greater title if you just eat this appetizer. Oh. Now oh. beware! It is. The biggest appetizer that anyone in this land has ever seen. Okay, I'll try it. What do you call this? <laughs> what do I call it? One ton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's, what? It's terrible. <coughs> Why did you ask me to eat that? <coughs> because only a true leader can eat. A, a, what it can only be described as a mountain, a mountain of terrible uh, food in order to lead. That's how I know that you're doing it for the people and not for your own selfish, powerful gains. <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> mm. 
Mm, so, as Pope of Food and my advisor, I I kind of wanted to change my name since I'm getting this new title. I don't want people to call me King Prissy Pants. My dad named me Prissy Pants. Right. Well, now he's dead. Hurry! I mean, long live the king. Uh-oh. This is something that I'm going to sleep on and address another time. <laughs> Uh-huh. Almost done. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, oh. Call me King Wonton. Uh, Call me King like, Wonton. It looks like a piece fell out of your mouth. Huh? Oh, God. Not very uh. kingly, if you ask me. I'm a king. I'm King Wontons. I'm eat King Wonton. Eat it. Eat it. Oh, God. I'm King Wonton. No. Eh. No. You, sir, are Emperor Wonton. Start the match. <laughs> and scene. scene. Wow. They should turn that into an HBO series. I know. The thing is, they could just do a whole spinoff series of just what happens before Goku interacts with these people. that he Oh, across. I would love that. Why wasn't Kai that? <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Kai should have should have gone back. Maybe they'll do Dragon Ball Kai. I, you know what I think they should they'll do. They'll do exactly that. They'll show they'll show the towns like hours before Goku showed up, or just like explain the infrastructure of the town before the you get there, or even after he leaves. What are the effects that he leaves behind? You know, what would be a good title for that show. Uh, I think it would be Dragon Ball, maybe Sleeping Dragon or something long, perhaps. If I am I am I right? You're the linguistic expert. Well, uh, I believe it would be called uh, something. If you wanted to be something dragon, like sleeping dragon, it would probably be. Uh, oh, I don't want to be culturally insensitive, but I back myself into a corner, so I'm just going to cough out of it. Uh, it'll be something long. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, honestly, you should have a teaching position somewhere, I think. You know what? I've turned down some at Brown. Yale. Did they ask you to do it and you turn it down or did you just preemptively turn them down? Uh, well, <laughs> right. well, as I recall, <laughs> wake up, Dean. Huh? Huh? Oh, it's Dean's nap time. <laughs> Look, I don't care and I'm not a student here. I want to teach. <laughs> Well, this is highly unorthodox, but uh, I like your gumption. What do you want to teach, son? Linguistics. Linguistics. And I'm not your son. I have a father. Well, if you'd like to denounce him and become my son, I have always wanted a full adult son. I don't like your mustache. Give me a job here at Yale. (laughs) Wait, you don't like my mustache? Look, I'm a linguist. I'm a master of language. Give me the teaching position. Just, it's hard for me to get past the mustache thing, but... You know what? I don't know anything about your background or your ability to teach language or semantics or anything about how it's people It's pronounced speak. semantics. But I, I, I like your interview style. Uh, the, the job's yours. <laughs> I'll call up the current de- uh, professor of linguistics and fire him right away. Hello? Professor Purvis, you're fired. No! I, that's right. No! I don't want to see your disgusting face or your office full of books again. Uh, hey, hey, you're going to fire me? You're going to fire me? The professor of linguistics has been here at Yale for 30 years? Yeah, huh? stale. They should call you. You should. You're, you know what? You're, you're not a Yale teacher at Yale. You're a teacher at Stale University. That's what oh, it feels yeah, like. Oh, yeah, you think you're going to get rid of me so easy? Huh? Huh? You're my own brother. <laughs> You're my own brother. You're going to do this. Be my son. No. I I want a son. You can't. You're impotent, man. Leave me alone. I'm an impotent and I'm unwilling to go through the whole adoption process. Be my son and you can still stay here as professor son. Look, I'm getting this sense that you're firing me to hire someone else. Yeah. In my place. What's this guy's name? Name? Yeah, what's his name? I'm not even sure he has a name. Ask him his name. What's uh, uh name? Vince White. 
Yeah, he doesn't have a name. Oh, then I'm not leaving until you give him a name. End call. When can you start? I don't want the job anymore. <laughs> no, I woke up from Dean's sleep time for this. And scene. scene. Oh, I love Dean's sleep time. <laughs> Lou, I'm Dean's sleep time. I heard that actually the creators of Dragon Ball were um, thinking about making that a, just like a new series called Dean's Dean sleep, sleep time. time. Yeah. It, it, it <laughs> I had something dumb to say and I chose not to say it. That doesn't sound like the spirit of this at all. Uh, well, I'm not going there. <laughs> um, but we see, what was it? We, well, getting back into the episode, Master Chin, Goku, they they thwart Rising Dragon, and it's it's all diffused by Sky Dragon. He he walks in at the end, who you aptly described as a Prince s- Slappy Hands. Prince Slappy Hands, because he comes in, comes in with reckless abandon, and just smacks his brother about right. the face in front of everybody. Right. And it does. It's interesting because it does like it does stop the tirade that his brother is going on, but it doesn't. It leaves. I think it leaves a red mark, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to hurt him really. He's just like, oh, oh, you're slapping me, okay, and then very, very proudly apologizes. Yeah. So we get we get the introduction to the bad guys in this episode. We get the introduction to the good guys of this episode. So we now know where Goku's going to align with the good guys. Goku, in helping Master Chin, they take. They, Master Chin takes him back uh, to his school, the martial arts school, where they live and train. I have no students. No students there. Not even, like, not a one. Nope. So there are two competing schools. Uh, it's Sky Dragon School and Master Chin School. And we learn that Master Chin's been losing students because Sky Dragon hates competition. He hates there being a different, another school. Mm. So instead of talking about it, Mas- uh, Sky Dragon just beats up Master Chin's students until they join his school. We learned that. Yeah. Okay. I Pretty didn't feel much. Like there was any mention of that on my end, but I, I'm following this like th- that's very interesting because I'm following the logic of this whole town back from the shirt in the river, and this lady knows that that Ken is the force to be reckoned with in the town, right? Yet yeah. every martial arts student is. At the Dragon's Dojo. I guess it makes sense if he's beating them up to join. He's like threatening them, I think Master Chin says. He's like, I've lost all my students because Sky Dragon is threatening them. Threatening them with what? Like, I'm going to beat you up? It's like, okay, I'm just going to go to Master Chin school and learn how to defend myself because he's a better teacher than you. Yeah, I, you know what? There's just the, the dragons in this town, the dragon family is just, they're bleeding insecurity out all over the place. Can we get to a dragon family dinner? How's your, hey, I'm I'm so glad I'm glad we're doing this Sunday dinner thing. I don't see you boys so much ever since you started that dojo. Yeah, mom. Well, we we got a, we got a lot of hard work to do in stealing all Master Chin students. We want to be the best, and we're gonna we're gonna threaten them with with uh. Or, Shall huh? You're drooling. Uh, sorry. I taught you better than that, and also no filler words. I taught you better than that. Think about what you're going to say and then say it. Okay. We are working hard to get more students by stealing them, mother. Good. Yes. Just like I took a dragon family legacy. The dragon family legacy, mother. Okay. Let's all do the dragon family chant. Let's eat and steal. <laughs> and see. Wow. What a. I mean, for a bunch of bad people, at least they're together. Right? Yeah, I mean, they're figuring it out. It's not maybe the right way, but they're. Kind, it feels like they're on the path to something. It's. It's a little insidious, but there's love there. Yeah, and that's that was surprising. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Goku and Master Chin they they spar a little bit. We and Master Chin introduces Goku to the Phantom Star technique, uh, which will come up later in the episode. Right. Did they? Was that the name of it in your episode? It's called the Invisible Starfish. The Invisible Starfish? Oh my god! I was I really hoping that that would not translate, and it didn't. This is really good. Oh man, that's way better than Phantom Star. Mm-hmm. Like, could you? <laughs> 
It's so great. The invisible starfish. That half that half sounds like an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants mm-hmm. where Patrick thinks he's invisible. It's almost like too elegant. It's like one of their well well titled episodes. For, like they, it's it, they, SpongeBob doesn't usually go that far, but no. I can definitely. It seems like it might be one um, of those genre episodes of SpongeBob, right? Or um, perhaps a arch nemesis to mer- Merman. Is that Merman? It? Yes. Oh, it's a Merman episode. Right. Ooh. He's <laughs> Hey, SpongeBob. Uh, I'm a villain now. <laughs> you could call me the Invisible Starfish. <laughs> oh, Patrick. I'm not concerned with that. I'm working at the Krabby Patty today. Well, you might want to be concerned, SpongeBob, because I've got a gun. <laughs> as long as you don't bring it through the doors of the finest... Pop, pop. Oh, oh, thank Eating a stem of sponge. Eating establishment oh. under the sea, then we've got nothing to worry about. You didn't even ask me why they called me the Invisible Starfish. Is it because you're wearing uh, a camouflaged outfit? Yes. Oh, <laughs> lives in a pineapple under the sea. He's fine. Nice <laughs> We never even got to Merman in that episode. I was really, I was like, oh, is this going to be one of those ones where, like, the main cast kind of steps out and then we follow? Well, they didn't. But we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't do also, that. Also, a rare cold open for SpongeBob yeah. SquarePants. Yeah. Uh, back to the episode. Master Chin, in sparring with Goku, is hurt again. He's clutching his chest. Turns out he's very sick. Right. Has been for a while. Right. Nobody ever thought to go get a medicine until Goku showed up. Is that the case? It also feels like, like, oh wait. So is is uh, Mr. Long, Mr. Dragon, is he in in the um, English version? Uh, as a linguistics professor, you know what I said. Exactly. And, and uh, is he is he saying to himself to in a monologue or sometimes out loud, sometimes to his brother? Is he saying, "I'm going to kill Ken in this tournament"? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because he, he is saying that in here. And, like, the more we see Ken suffering, like, it does kind of seem like it could be, like, an act of kindness. I, I mean, I think he just has... Um, it sounds like an upper respiratory illness. Yes. 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 <laughs> and that's maybe a good reason to lose students. He can't... You can't be teaching all day. You can't, can't teach with a cough. No. <laughs> well, okay. Not with a cough, but, like, it, it stops him. It slows him down. He falls in the street. Is it um, just a little bit of congestion, or is it like, uh, does he have the black lung? You know, has he been mining for? But too we long? don't, we don't know, and it's never really explained no. why. Like, it, it seemed for me, I thought the episode was going to end up with Goku having to travel somewhere really far, or like go to some like treacherous area to get a certain medicine to heal right. him so he can fight and win. But no, nope. that's not the case. I thought it was going to be a huge deviation. Maybe this was going to end up being like a three-episode arc or something. Yes, I thought that too. But instead, it's like, okay, Goku, go get the medicine. Goku goes and gets the medicine, gets kind of roughed up by yeah. Sky Dragon and Rising Dragon, and then we cut to commercial. Mm. I was just like, what are we doing here? Hey, everybody. It's me, Master Corin again. I wanted to tell you something, okay? I, I know times are, times are tough. Times are tough for everybody. But you know what makes it easier? Leaving Kame House Party a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast, okay? I may be a cat man who lives in a tower. I've got water in a cabinet. I've got buckets of water that show you past, present, and future. But what I really want, I want to see Kame House Party achieve their goal of becoming the number one podcast on iTunes related to Dragon Ball. And to do that, we need your help. We need your five star ball reviews. So if you like this podcast, please like, share, and subscribe. If you, here's the kicker, if you leave a review on iTunes, whatever it is, if you give it five stars, Vince and Aaron, they will read it on air. Whatever it is, they'll read it. Think about that. Enjoy the rest of the show. Me, Master Corn now. That's, that's nice of Master Corn to leave that. 
leave that yeah. for us. It's good. It's good that you got him. He's obviously. I, I mean, like, if he's a fan of this, specifically this show, I mean, what does that say about the, the the show? I mean, this one. I think it's at least it's at least worth a listen. Yeah. I mean, the characters are showing out to to ask for your help. Right. Audience members. Right. I believe Vegeta called in at one point. Vegeta's like, Vegeta is a he's a friend of the show. Yeah. A lot a lot like Master Roshi, a big friend of the show. Um and uh, maybe Rising Dragon will become a fan, fan of the show. Uh because Goku, he gets the medicine, mm. he gets kind of he gets jumped by Sky Dragon and his brother. Right. Um Right so this is an interesting part for me because at the beginning, when they're in the town square and everyone's gathered around, like it's obvious that Rising Dragon is a bit of a blowhard and he needs to, you know, like fight every time something happens, anything happens. He's a vengeful man, Master Chase he's, says. He's very, he's very childish. And, but, um, uh, the uh, the the Sky Dragon comes in and is like, oh hey, I'm sorry. We're gonna settle this in the ring like martial artists, mm-hmm. right? And then he, that's why he slaps his brother, and that's why they leave. But then they're eating, and again, you see Sky Dragon very disciplined, not drinking. Rising Dragon is sloppy with sake, and he throws the empty sake bottle at Goku. That's how this interaction starts. Mm -hmm. And then he's sky dragon's perfectly fine with it. Now that nobody's really watching besides the waitress. So I, I mean like, I guess it's all very performative honor. He's not really an honor. Oh yeah. I mean, which you kind of get a sense of before, but it's, I guess it's interesting to me because I feel like this character wouldn't give a, a hootie and the blowfish about any of them. So wouldn't give a hootie and the blowfish. Yeah. That's why we have you on this show. <laughs> uh, but absolutely, like it, it, it showed Sky Dragon's true character in that moment, which is even more confusing when we get to the end oh, of the yeah. podcast. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, we see Rising Dragon in action a little bit. He's jumping. He's trying to hit Goku. Goku's just messing with him at this point, dodging. Blah blah blah. Sky Dragon shows up to finish off. Goku essentially. Mm-hmm. Goku acknowledges that he is a fast, fast fighter. Does not fight as mm-hmm. per Master Chin's orders. Gets back to the dojo, uh, and this is this is where I really don't like Shokan. Right, but, but but okay. So before we get into this, yeah. When we're getting the backstory between Ken and and the and Mister Dragon here, do you get the line um, that Sky Dragon's heart has been eaten away by demons? No. That was it, and that was where they left it. Wait, are they you suggesting... They didn't go into it any further than that. That is what Ken said to Goku when he was explaining who Long was. And I was just like, okay, well, then let's... let's fair- so what does that mean? Doesn't matter what it means. We don't... I think the most of this episode is, like, in Dragon Ball fashion, they set up something which we are preconditioned to be like, oh, this is going to kind of have- be a little bit more involved. Mm-hmm. Usually they're very thorough. And I think this is a lot of setup that we like are like, wait, what is going on here? Which leads us back to what we were saying. This could, they were setting this up to be, a, it seemed like a much longer arc. Right. For, it could have been a two or three episode arc that they condensed probably to one for whatever reason. Yeah, maybe they did have, these were all seeds. They're like, okay, this is going to be great for all these episodes we're going to do. And then at the end of it, they're like, eh. And maybe, I, I don't know, I, I have, uh. I have to admit, um, here to all of you today, I have not read the Dragon Ball manga in its entirety. Um, So there may be side stories that get explored in the manga that aren't explored here. Again, uh, as a humble podcast host, I beseech you to let me know about my ignorance. Fill me in. Okay? I I am not a prideful man. I will take your information to heart because, as we all know, for this podcast, I don't do no research. And if you do want to hear more about the Dragon Ball manga, uh, subscribe to my podcast, Manga. You believe it. Okay. Um, John, uh, I am very close to slapping you about the face. Prince Slappy Hands, no. How could you? I brought you into this podcast to be a good boy. 
And you've been a very bad boy. Podcast dragon, I didn't mean to. That's right. I am Sky Dragon's father, Podcast Dragon. I don't like competition other than Kame House Party. And you, sir, have sullied the podcasting name. But Mr. Dragon, just realize Too that... Too late. No, it's all over my face. They're so fast. Where do you think my son got it? I was hoping he developed it of his own volition. Nah, no. His heart was eaten by demons when he was three. Go into that more. What does that mean? Okay. Stop leaving it at that. Goodbye. <laughs> and scene. scene. I, what the heck? I cannot believe that they they didn't get that. Give that to me in the uh, English version. I can't. Be, I mean, like, or just even something more like in that version. Just them saying, like, well, he was corrupted by the mob. Like, just like in a, some a, some tangential I mean, thing. It, it was basically Master Chin just said, uh, like. Sky Dragon, he hates competition, so he's been trying to muscle me out, essentially. Like, that's See, it. I think where you got that, which was a little bit of an explanation of what's going on with these dojos, I got his heart was eaten by dragons. Uh, demons. Eaten by demons. <laughs> eaten by dragons. <laughs> now we're starting to get yeah, somewhere. Now, yeah. now, now we're getting an explanation. This is what we wanted. <laughs> so Goku, yeah, Goku gets back to the dojo, gives the medicine to Master Chin. Everybody goes to bed, except Shoken. Shoken, Master Chin's son, decides that he he's like, I wanna fight I wanna fight Scry Trick, and I'm good enough. So he's out there training all night. And and like, what do we see at all anywhere up to this point that shows that he has any fighting capability, let alone enough to be the strongest in this apparently pretty strong village because It's a very strong village. It seems like when we've seen Goku literally be shot by a gun and not and he's like, yeah, it stung, like it hurt, but like didn't really affect him. But he gets straight up slapped by this guy's hands, and he's, like, in pain and visibly scuffed up. Yeah. Okay, this is probably a pretty strong dude. And then yeah. this, this kid is just... Okay. Did do we get your... Um, did, did, did Ken in your version say, Goku and, and, and my son are, are basically like earth and sky? No. And I'm like, ah, oh, jaburned. Jaburned. Uh, Holy so crap. Go on, jaburned. So wait... Master Chin said that about his own son? Yeah. Whew, called him Earth? Where Goku's the sky? I, or, yeah, yeah, maybe that. I'm not sure which one was Earth and which one was sky, but the comparison was you two are, are so different that you can't stand in for him. Exactly. So uh, in the morning, Master Chin is explaining to Shoken. He's like, look, kid, you can't, you can't fill in for me. You're not ready. And basically, Shoken gets angry. Master Chin basically says, like, like Goku's better than you. He does, he does say those words. He's like, your arrogance blinds mm. you to the fact that Goku is right. far stronger than you. You see, now that would have been a lot clearer, I think, if he had said, you're like the Earth and Goku is like the sky. Yeah. See, that just it know, makes sense. Yeah. It resonates with you. As a linguist, I would know that would be... Right. Spot on translation. Did Did you get any uh, job offers besides Yale? Uh, I got one from MIT. Oh yeah, how'd that go? I didn't know code. That was the, that's the only language I don't know. That was weird that they they thought that that was necessary. See, I took a linguistics class in college, and there was no code. No code came into it at all. Exactly, because that's just n- not how I was taught, mm. and that's not how I'm going to teach. All right. So why I took the interview. Save that for another episode. Oh, man. <laughs> um, so, but I, one of the things that I found confusing about this scene was, like, Goku kind of steps in. He's still in, like, his jammies. He's in that tank top and shorts. Okay. But he's got this bright white background of the outside behind him as he's, like, interacting with Sho Ken and Master Chin saying, like, oh, I'll step in. I'll fight Sky Dragon. <laughs> like, he's strong, and that I'm here to fight strong guys. And if you can't fight, I'll fight for you. Blah, blah, blah. But he's doing this, and it's just, like, bright white light. Like, he's a savior. I'm like, he ain't no savior. <laughs> he ain't here to save you. He's, he's only giving you that medicine so he can fight you, old man. Right, he's just here for his own selfish gains. He doesn't and have, no. the, Oh, sorry, keep going. I was just going to say, he has no investment in, like, the development of the culture of this town. 
which is like what is obviously like the gravity of the situation between the dr- dragons and the chins. Boom roasted. You did my job for me. Goku the sociopath strikes again. <laughs> uh, and it's just it's it's wild because and I guess this this is this answers my question when I when I said like why have they not given him medicine before now? Turns out medicine just don't work. <laughs> medicine it just, makes just him doesn't feel work. better, maybe, but not enough to fight. Yeah, it makes him feel good enough that he's not coughing, but he cannot fight. Yeah, he's uh, dying. He, Chin's dying. <laughs> well, that's what we don't see at, at yeah. the end of the episode. His master Chin just keels over, has a heart attack, and dies because Goku got him cough syrup instead of right. like a heart medication. What Dragon was really trying to do was make a nice swift end to his suffering, and what Goku did was prolong it even further so that his he could wither away in front of his son. You know what, John? I'm liking this so much. You see this big button? I do. Now I'm flipping up the button shield. Oh, for me? No. Oh, okay. I'm the one who pushes this button. Right. That explanation I'm making, Cannon, not Nick Cannon. Not Nick Cannon. <laughs> We're wild in, in, because it's true. Mariah Carey. <laughs> Take that, Nick Cannon, you smug son of a bitch. But yeah, I like that. The secret ending to this episode is Master Chin dies of a heart attack. Sky Dragon takes over both schools and rules the uh, the city with a demon heart. Uh, <laughs> well, no, he has no heart because oh, he's yeah. eaten by demons. He rules it with an empty cavity of a chest. <laughs> yeah, so Shoken is visibly upset by Goku stepping in. Shoken believes he should be staying in for his father. Uh, and, God, Lee, like, this kid, he's got it all wrong. Because what he does to make sure that he is the one to fill in for his father, he makes everybody breakfast. <laughs> and this Classic breakfast miso soup. Classic breakfast rice and soup. He slips a little pill into Goku's soup. You know what? Like, what if he's more insidious than that, Vince? What if... The whole time. What if the reason his dad's sick? What if the reason all these other students are actually gone? It's all this kid. He just thinks, like, he's really trying to climb like it's a royal ladder. It's like he doesn't understand martial arts is a skill-based thing. You don't just inherit it. And he's just poisoning Goku. Poisoning old so Master you're, so, Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Because I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. And what you're putting down is that Sho Ken... Is the re- Shoken's really the bad guy here? It, I mean, he seems like the worst one, especially like by the end of the episode. Yes, absolutely. So I, that makes total sense that Shoken is probably the kid that's beating up everybody and telling them to go uh, train under Sky right. Dragon, go to Dragon Dojo, because he, he wants to be the only one to learn from his father. And we get a cutaway, and those those students aren't happy to be in the Dragon Dojo. No, like you think they they probably miss the chins very dearly, and and this this kid like might not be the best fighter, but he's really good at slipping bed bugs into your cot. Like he's Ex- absolutely, you know, like he he's he's cutting the brakes to your car. You're, he's more of a Murasaki than a Goku. He's right. he's, a big, he's a bit of a ninja in his slyness and how he takes down the competition. But at least Murasaki had great comedic timing. I don't see that with this kid at no, all. No, no, no. No comedic timing. But that was, a good, that was good to call out the, the cut to, because we do get a cut to the Dragon Dojo as uh, Sky Dragon is preparing to fight Master Chin. And his training technique is just beating up his students incessantly. Yeah, with his head. With his head. He, he, I guess we see him with his hands tied behind his back and goes, really? None of you can fight me? Blah, blah, blah. I'll, fine, I'll do it without my hands or my feet. But we do get a little like subtle hinting from the stage picture there. We see a lot of the students in his front row with uh, sl- their arms in a sling, bandages on their head, scuff marks on their skin. Um, so we know that like these, these guys have been through a little bit of trauma. They're all very reluctant to participate. Absolutely. Which... Again, why continue? Like, what if it, if it's Shoken? He's got to be blackmailing all these kids. He's he's got something on him. He's probably like, hey, I've seen you peeping on the onsen. I've seen you peeping. 
I see you peeping. Now, if, it, if nobody, if you don't want nobody to find out you peeping, you gotta go to Dragon's Dojo and fight there. If you if you leave, I'm gonna tell everybody you a peeper. Like I'm wondering what is what is holding them there. They're not getting stronger. They're just getting their asses kicked over and over again. Their love for the martial art, you know, even though that martial arts bubble is like popping, they're like, well, this is this, you know, like. So many of these martial arts theaters are closing. I don't know if you can draw any parallels. Um, you know, I'm just going to stay at the one that I think that you will give me a chance eventually, maybe, if I'm here long enough. I mean, the politics of this, this town elude us to a degree that is frustrating. Right. It is simply frustrating. Well, okay, th- here's a bigger question. Like, the whole episode is, well, then you get to be the do- the the martial arts teacher for the for the empire. It's like, okay, well, what the what the what is, hell what does, that, does mean? that mean? What, what is, is that, that good mean? for? Right? It's like you're the you're not the per- personal um, teacher to the royal family. You're not the personal guard to the royal family. No, you're not crowned best martial artist. You are the teacher. So it's like, are, is it had the emperor passed a law that was like. Emperor you, Wonton. <laughs> yes, Emperor Wonton. Um, well, as my first uh, rule, as the appetizer uh, <laughs> emperor of the land, I will make it only legal to teach one type of martial arts in my kingdom. And it's like, okay, well, there's all these schools, Emperor. What are we going to do? Well, Liquidate them. <laughs> liquid Fight. <laughs> Fight for the right. <laughs> to to teach. <laughs> to RT. To martial RT. But yeah. The whole premise is flimsy, and it took us almost to the end to get to this point, mm-hmm. where we just, we cannot, we, listeners, we, we can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. We can't fake it, because they didn't even try, okay? That's where we're at right now, is they barely tried, we're barely trying now, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Shoken, still a jerk, gives Goku what turns out to be a poo pill. Yeah, a laxative, I guess. A laxative. Again, it gets but it gets us back to what like what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> what year are you? What yeah, year I mean, are like, we in? He's got, it's, it's a it's a it's a prescription vial like what we have like it's got a twisty top. Yeah. But the medicine that Goku brought to Master Chen it was like an old apothecary jar. Yeah, it was an apothecary jar. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can't see it right now, but. But I am I'm doing the Jackie Chan meme where he's like, what are you talking about? Look, we went in the first saga to a village that had simultaneously like a cowboy and like an Egyptian. I don't know. It's like it yeah, seems yeah. like all the thing about this. The universe, village people village. <laughs> right. Is all it's times happening all at once. Uh Dr. Brief saves dinosaurs. He runs a dinosaur shelter. Okay, fine. I get it. But the thing about all those things is they do have all of time at once. This specifically is like 1800s Japan village. Yeah. And uh, so this is the one piece of technology that does make it in is Shoken's little screw top poison. You know what? He's been corrupted by the city and he's come back with poisons. So it's solved it. When did Shoken have time to get that? <laughs> when his dad was busy with his dojo teaching all these kids, and he's like, why can't he spend time with his real son? Ugh. Why can't he teach his real son how to fight? I'm 10 years old. I deserve all the attention. I'm going to go to the city and see. He won't even notice. He didn't even notice I went to the city. I'm Shoken. I hate Shoken. Yeah, he's the worst. Shoken is public enemy number two. Bulma's number one still. Number one, yeah. Um, but, yeah. God. We tried to contain it all episode. Now we just had to let it out. Sorry, everybody. Sorry about yeah. that. Um, so we, Shoken is kind of setting Goku up to fail as they are heading towards the the king's match. Right. Uh, he he's visibly nervous. Shoken is because he's like, oh, Goku hasn't felt it yet. Uh, Goku, how are you feeling? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Master Chin is like, you look nervous, son. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Goku starts the fight. Um, and I. this is what I did like about this episode. Because, again, I truly thought this was going to be at least a two-episode show. Right. Because we were at, almost at the end before the fight starts. Um, and if you want my star rating, I'll give it to you. Uh, for this fight, I give it a three and a half star balls out of Seven. So, 
it's a little too short for me. We okay. see, we do see some good techniques. You know what? I'm going to bump it up to a four. Four star balls out of seven. Okay. Uh, the animation is pretty good. The techniques that are used are pretty good. Goku uses the invisible starfish. Uh, Sky Dragon uses the, what does he call it? The leg tornado? Something tornado? Either way, uh, there's there's some after image techniques going on. Yeah. I like that. And he um, sees that he's a force to be reckoned with now. When I think he was poke, uh, picking on Goku on the bridge, yep. he's now like, oh, this guy is actually, now that he's letting loose, he's like actually a worthy fighter. He's got some skills. Yeah. But halfway through the fight, <laughs> Goku got a poop. Yeah. And but, that's... Okay, what does he say? I've got to take a dump, those words in your version? No. Okay, great. Because that's what he says in mine. Why did, Why can't he say that in America? <laughs> and the whole crowd's like, oh, how inelegant. He, he said to dump. Why can't he just say go to the bathroom? And uh, That's what they do instead. In my episode, you know what they said? Goku's like, oh, my tummy feels weird. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm glad I watched this version. Yeah, well, and there's no the the audience does barely reacts. They're just like, oh, and the announcer's like, seems like Goku isn't feeling well. Um, and of course, Shou- Shouken is like, oh, I didn't mean to, Dad. Oh, I didn't want Goku. I thought he'd just quit when his stomach hurt. It's like because right. oh, he catches him with the vial. catches him with the vial. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and boy, oh boy, like, and that's why I give this fight four star balls because it's got a little bit of funny there's a light action uh basically goku at, finishes the fight with the invisible star technique um while holding in the runs which is pretty impressive if no. you ask me no 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 so this didn't happen in yours a little came out was a line that goku said in in mine yeah a little came out he asked if he could go to the bathroom and they're like no time out baby what and so he couldn't go and so he like kicks him and he's like you made a little come out yeah. Ew, oh, Goku's oh, dirty by the end of this fight. Man. Goku's so dirty by the end of the fight. That that's messed up, man. That is awful. Yeah. That's terrifying. Goku shat on stage. I wrote down the phrase in quotes "dumb strength." I'm pretty sure that somebody says that. Um, I can't remember right now <laughs> who, but uh, I think it was um, Mr. Dragon saying. Oh, it's a, that dumb, he's got dump strength. He's got that dump strength. Yeah. Uh, Goku does finish off Sky Dragon mm-hmm. in the sky with one single punch, knocks him out. And then we get the most storybook fucking ending ever. Out of nowhere. This is what makes it to me feel like it was a rush tra- job on this episode because, like, everything else was, like, we we have done a good job of, of, of asking where what, what's going on here, but, like... Decent the, exposition. But it's it could be, like, so much like a like a Hemingway with the old man in the sea. He threw away everything he thought was important, so it's, like, it's there, you just don't hear it, but with this last one, it's, like, what, what happened? <laughs> it feels like it's been a week now that's gone by and a yes. lot of emotional developments happened. But we don't get to see it. <laughs> it's really, I wrote down, Goku's violence solved everything <laughs> just all of the emotional problems that they had in the town are now solved, solved by one monkey boy <laughs> yeah <laughs> um because we see like literally dragons complete like i could even say his younger brother would make sense because his younger brother was emotionally undeveloped but 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 sky dragon was very set in his ways and, he was going to kill master Chief. right he was going to kill him and at the end, he's just like, "We're good now." And it's like, "All right, I guess." I think he has a co- he has a line being like, "Thanks to you, Goku, me knowing defeat has made it has made me want a second chance, and I'm going to start with Master Chin." Fuck no, <laughs> absolutely not. You you are an extortionist, a racketeer, a bully, a bully. You had you, you had the intent to kill. Plus, I heard you stopped going to those Sunday dinners with your mom. Stop going to Sunday family dragon dinners with his mom? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he picks his nose and wipes it on other people's chairs. I bet he picks his butt and wipes it on other people's clothes. I bet you Sky Dragon is the kind of guy that chews gum, puts it behind his ear, and saves it for later. Okay. I bet he's the kind of guy who chews gum and puts it under your coffee table when he's at your house. Not even when he's in public, which still isn't Just at somebody's house? Yeah, just at somebody's house. And then he's like... I, I lost. I want a clean slate. Also, here are all my students, Master Chin. Set up an infrastructure for a hundred kids that want to learn how to fight. 
Oh, and you're probably not well still, so good luck with that. And your son's probably still a jealous little son, and he is going to try to kill all of those students just like he tried to poison Goku. Uh, It's just wild. But you know what? If Goku walks into a sunset, everything works out. Everything works out. Did you get the line from Shoken where he's trying to admit to Goku what he did? I don't think so. He starts to admit to Goku that he was the one who made him have to go to the bathroom so bad. He said, Goku, about the about the soup, I'm, I'm... And then Goku's like, you don't have to say anything. It was delicious. Oh, no, wait, yeah, we did have it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's like, you know that soup? I think he just says, like, you know that soup that I made you this morning? He's like, yeah, it was great. You know? Mm-hmm. That would then he gives him <laughs> three rice balls and says, let, let this help you on your journey. Oh, boy. Three yeah. rice balls. And Goku, <laughs> hey, Goku eats one immediately. Right. Of course he does. Three rice balls isn't enough. He inhales that. And that's pretty much it. Right. That's the end of the episode. Uh, I feel I like, like, like we put into canon, Master Chin, he's done for at the end. Yeah, there I are mean, so many forces working against him. What's uh, the disease I think that he has? Um, it's it's always the one in in movies. You see, uh, like the character is like doing some questionable stuff or like asserting himself a lot, and then he coughs and removes the napkin, and, and there's it's a few blood, blood stains. It's yeah. the it's the ye old actor's cough. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he definitely has. Yes. So we know Sky Dragon's going to take over and probably Shoken's going to poison him and the whole town's going to fall back into disarray. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Emperor Wonton's going to have to instate military rule. Hopefully some uh, King Samosa or something will come by and try Mm -hmm. to usurp him. But Mm -hmm. we don't know because Capsule Corp has not introduced their technology. This is like a – you know what it is? The Emperor Wonton, in order to secure his seat of power, has not let new – Technology, and he lets passerbys come in somehow, mm-hmm. but he will not let them bring technology with them. That's what it is. That's it. Solved. Solved. You know what else? This has nowhere, nothing to do with uh, this episode at all. But um, I think mass. You know how there's the the people that had uh, created the shrine to the the dragon, the wish, the wishing dragon, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then when the thieves tried to steal from it, it sent the balls. The out. The original peoples, right? Yes. I think Master Roshi was one of those, maybe not a thief, maybe a thief, but like one of those people. Oh, you're getting into some, look, if you have something to say about what John just said, because this is the end of the episode, yeah. feel free to let us know at KameHouseParty at gmail.com. Uh, this, is, this is the end of episode 80. Stay tuned uh, for the next episode, episode 81. Uh, not sure if, who the special guest will be for that one. Probably me. I just... Probably are you just always going to be me? Are you done? Probably just. Are you done? Are you done? Maybe Blake Shelton. Maybe Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton might be on the podcast next week. Uh, but enjoy your Tuesday. John, do you have anything to plug? Come over. Come over. I have a nice, I have a nice uh, house. We'll maybe we'll play uh, some board games. People, that's a lost art. Okay, John, uh, I'm just going to do this bit for you. John is a host of the Ian Heron Improv Half Hour, which Aaron and I have been on. Uh, The podcast has been MIA for a little bit, but the podcast is coming back. It's very Uh, fun. uh, It's a lot of fun. It is an improvised podcast where they have great guests who do some on-air improv with the hosts. Uh, It's hilarious. You can also see some of these guest live if you live here in new york right uh so check out look look for ian heron improv half hour or the ian heron improv hour that is the live show at the pit uh pit theater here in new york um is there anything else john you got well, going on um i don't know if you ever talk about the legend continues but vince and i do a show if you're also in new york and you want to see some of those performers and other performers and us you can come to the next one on Friday the 13th in Legion Bar in Williamsburg. That's right. The worst Friday ever. No, I'm kidding. There's nothing There's nothing superstitious about the, the number 13. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Remember to share, like, and subscribe. Leave us a review, as Master Corrin has asked you to yeah. do. Uh, it really helps the podcast, helps us yeah. get out there. Uh, if you like the podcast, we know there are other people that like it too. Um, if you want to tell us things 
or tweet at us or hit us up on Instagram uh, at Ajax Shelton. That's Aaron's at Ajax Shelton on Instagram at Aaron J. Shelton on Twitter. And then you can find me at V-I-N-T underscore E on Instagram and Twitter. Also on PlayStation Network. Um, have not been playing a whole lot of Dragon Ball Fighters, but about to get my skills right for Broly and Bardock Ooh. DLC coming at you real quick. As we like to end every episode of the podcast, except for the one Will Martinez was on, because boy, oh boy, I messed up on that, and I'm still saying sorry. Um, with our affirmation of positivity, no matter what's going on, what you got happening, you know what you got to do. You got to, John, please say this with me. You got to keep...